just leave them there, you know. Mm -hmm. help yourself. Mm -hmm. Into the straight Spanish false, the leader Sunshine Life down here. Spanish false has won the money. Ah, mongrel. Beat by half head. Yeah. Oh, isn't this exciting, Hoggy? I've never been to an art exhibition before. Well, that's one of the many bonuses of knocking around with a joker like me, Rosie. You pick up a bit of culture along the way. Yeah. <laughs> you like an hors d'oeuvre, sir? No, oh, no thanks, mate. I'll have a bit of the tucker, though. <laughs> Not for me. Oh, I won't have any. I've got to watch my figure. You might as well, Rosie. Everyone else does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, Hagy. David. Sir, <laughs> 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 madam, like a drink. Oh, thanks very much, John. Oh, good on you. <laughs> oh, uh, hang on. I'll just put this down. Cheers. <laughs> uh, could I have your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, so as we may better evaluate our new works, let us first refresh our memories as to the works of the established masters. Here we have a miniature replica of the masterpiece by Jackson Pollock, Blue Poles, which was done, of course, during his Blue Period. Oh, poor thing. What was he depressed about? Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, uh, no, Rosie, not that sort of blue. You see, um, your artists, they work in garrets. You know, it's up in the attic, and it gets pretty cold up there, and they mean he was blue with the cold. <laughs> As you are aware, the original was recently purchased for the National Gallery by Mr. Whitlam for $1.2 million. Oh, $1.2 million for a painter's drop sheet, eh? They're in a frame. They saw a goth coming, didn't they? Uh, oh. this, <laughs> this, ladies and gentlemen, is Whistler's mother, the original of which last changed hands for $5 million. Gee, just for the mother? Imagine what a picture the whole family had cost. <laughs> and, uh, and right now, the enigmatic smile of the Mona Lisa. The question which has puzzled millions. Why was she smiling? Hi, Heidi, look. She smiles exactly like the girl does in the Playtex ad. <laughs> Doesn't she? Yeah, you're right, Rose. Yeah. yeah maybe she's smiling because she's comfortable in a cross your art bra. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they got that on Donovan's butcher shop calendar this year. <laughs> yeah, only because this is better. Better? Oh, yeah, he's got his framed in crumb cutlets. <laughs> <laughs> and in her hand there, she's got a leg of pork. <laughs> oh, he's a genius, Donovan, you know. Oh, yeah, oh he cool. never misses a trick. He's got a caption down the bottom. She's smiling. Because she got in for a chop at Donovan's. Put a court in, Rose. And now the greatest Italian painter of all time. Tony what? Brazzini. Tony Brazzini. Two bedrooms and a bathroom. Before Smogo, without a roller. <laughs> a, a reproduction of the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel by Michelangelo. The work took him seven years. There you are. Not a patch on Tony, eh? <laughs> and was commissioned by the infamous hunchback Pope, who was a... Ah, oh, yeah, that's right. That's why they did it on the ceiling. What? <laughs> hey? What's why doing? Michelangelo did it on the ceiling? Of course, the Pope was hunchback. What do you mean? Oh, well, you see, he used to get around like this. And he thought, if he'd get him to paint it on the ceiling, every day when he'd come in to have a look at it, he'd have to bend up like that. And he figured six or seven years of doing that, he'd get rid of the hunch in his back. Oh, <laughs> oh you know, mug the Pope. You just know everything about art, Hoagie. Well, uh, just about, Rose. <laughs> Perhaps then you might care to enlighten us on the uh, Moulin Rouge work of Toulouse-Lautrec. Oh, yes. yes. Go on. Thing, yeah. Go on. Do I? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen the picture. <clears throat> oh, certainly. Uh, pay attention, uh, fellow art lovers. Now, this here is what you call your Moulin Rouge. Although I doubt very much 
If that was done by Toulouse Lautrec himself. Oh, no, no. Well, to start with, you see, he was only three foot ten high, and I don't think he could reach that high. Oh. <laughs> and actually, you know, that was why, because he was three foot ten, he used to knock around the pubs in Paris and France. That was why he cut his ear off, see? Oh, uh, excuse me, but I, I think that was Van Gogh. You're right. No, no, Gogh bought the blue poles, love. <laughs> <laughs> now we're talking about the Toulouse Law Trek bloke now. Now you see, he used to walk through the pubs with his little hat on, three foot ten, about that high. And of course he was such a convenient height, all the drunks and the winos, you'd know about them, would sort of hash their fags on his head, see, on his hat. So he got a bit cut off about it, went home and sliced his ear off. And that made his hat tilt sideways on his head, you see. So when he walked through the pub, all the ashes just roll off onto the floor. <laughs> And Paul is still a trick, you know, he was only that high. Yeah, that's right. I guess you could say it was a bum whirl for Toulouse the trick. <laughs> oh, <I'm sorry. laughs> bum whirl? Yeah. Oh, yeah! <laughs> uh, well, I'm sorry, I know you want me to stay, but that's all I've got time for. Uh, me and Rosie going to the pictures. Bit of modern art. See you all later. What do you want to go and see, Rose? Oh, I don't know, Haggy. Uh, maybe uh, you're a case of the smiling stiffs. <laughs>